Hi everyone, I'm Chef Jess, and today I'm gonna to show you how to use your Instant Pot or other one pot meals. There's actually quite a lot that you can make in one pot, but a lot of people ask me why I love my Instant Pot so much, and I'll kind of give you an idea with two dishes. One is gonna be the jambalaya I'm gonna show you, and then the next one I'm gonna show you is a chicken shawarma bowl with rice, and you can do it all in one pot, um, but that's next, and so check out that video if you have time. Right now, I have my Instant Pot ready to go. I'm heating it up because I'm gonna be sauteing my veg, uh, my meats, my protein, before I make my jambalaya. So the beauty of the Instant Pot is that you can turn it on and you can actually saute in it. I'll be the first one to admit, it's not a huge surface area to saute in, so what actually ends up happening is you have to do it in batches. So if you're okay with doing one extra dish, go ahead and bring out a pan and you can saute your meats and everything in there. The downfall or the kind of bad side of that is you don't get as much of the flavors because the flavors are gonna be sticking to the bottom of the Instant Pot as opposed to the bottom of a pan. So if you do it in your pan, what I would say is make sure you deglaze the pan and then dump it all in here. So we're gonna start by making jambalaya. This is a really traditional recipe. Uh, my grandmother grew up in Mississippi and so I visited Mississippi all the way until I was 12 every year um, we would spend our summers there a lot of variations there's no right way or wrong way it's just what your family likes um, the traditional cookbooks are so vague on proportions that again people just make what they feel like making but there is there are certain things that are very traditional so we've got um, a Trinity going on and a Trinity you can't see it really well is celery, green bell pepper, and an onion. So I'm doing half a cup, half a cup, and half a cup of each. Each kind of um, region of the world has this kind of base. So frito is another one that you'll find. And then we have mirepoix for the French, which is celery, onions, and carrots. There are just things that make a base for flavor and they usually involve some kind of onion and it includes, um, and it involves sauteing it until it's nice and soft, almost like a sauce. So what I'm gonna do is I'm still waiting for this guy to heat up. It's pretty hot now. I have it on saute and on a high. I'm gonna coat it with oil and I've got three different proteins that I'm gonna be working with today. And you don't have to add all three. You can skip out on some. Um, you can skip out on all of them if you want. And the trick is to add smoked paprika. It gives you that smokiness that you would normally get with your andouille sausage. And so this is the andouille sausage. If you don't have andouille sausage, you can use the hot links um, kielbasa sausage too. You want a firm sausage though. And then you've got chicken, chicken thigh preferably, and then your shrimp. Shrimp is totally optional. And I'm actually gonna start with the sausage. The reason being, I want some of those fats from the sausage to saute my um, chicken in. So I'm gonna let that go for a little bit, and I'm just gonna saute it. I'm gonna pull it out as soon as it's done, too. So I'm just gonna let that sit on one end. Don't mix it around too much, because what'll end up happening is you won't get a nice sear on this. And you want that nice sear. So I'm just gonna leave it alone. And then I'll add my other proteins in as I go. While I'm doing that though, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna dice our onion. So I'm gonna take my onion, whoops, and I forgot my knife today, sorry everyone. I'm gonna keep my frilly part, the part that's intact, whole, and then I'm gonna trim off the trim off that extra part, throw that away, and then I'm gonna cut in half, and then I'm gonna peel. It's just easier to peel this way for me. You might have your own way of peeling onions. I find this helps the most. Um, but again, up to you. And we are only using half a cup, so you might only need half an onion. About one large onion is usually about one cup. So I'm gonna stir this around again. Again, you want it on a high, so you want, this is the part that is usually the most frustrating part with an Instant Pot. You just don't feel like it's the same as your flame, which is true, but it keeps your house nice and cool and you're only using one pot then. Let's continue with the onion. We're gonna use the tip of our knife and we're gonna give cuts all through the top, just like that. And then if you dare, you're gonna go in and saw halfway through and then do a small dice, so push forward. And then you've got your perfect dice going on. So I'm actually 
gonna add that to my bell peppers and celery. So that's all gonna go in at once, once all of these great things get sauteed. So we're getting some good color on that now. We're gonna wait a little bit more. We want some really good color. But instead of taking it out right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add my chicken in there. So that some of that fat can help brown that chicken too. So again, don't stir too much. I'm gonna let that sit for a few minutes and then shrimp. So, I bought shrimp that was peeled and deveined already. You can go a step further with this dish. We're using chicken stock today. If you really want the flavor of shrimp, what you can do is take the shells of the shrimp, or if you have shrimp heads too, and make a broth out of it with your chicken stock. And so, or you can even use just water. So bring water up to a boil, put your shells in there with their heads, and then let that steep on, or let, bring it up to a boil and then let it steep. So it's turned off for about 30 minutes. And you'll get this really nice, rich um, stock or broth from the shrimp. This is getting there. What you might notice when you're doing this, and it, it, different Instant Pots will have different reactions, but there is a function on there where it'll say burn. So that burn means that it's burning on the bottom of the pot, something sticking. What sometimes happens is it's because you don't have enough liquid in there or it really is burning. So just be careful when you're adding it. Um, when you're using an Instant Pot, you always need to have at least one cup of water in there, no matter what it is that you're doing, whether steaming, braising, sauteing, so on and so forth. Try to go for at least one cup of um, liquid in there. So again, just letting that go for a little bit longer. And our shrimp. You can choose to saute your shrimp right now and then hold off on it until the very end. Or you can actually just put it on towards the end of the cooking process. It's really up to you which way you want to do it. All right, but I think we're there now. We got some good color going on. Um, I can see where my hot spot on my Instant Pot is, where it's right there. This is fine, so just turn your Instant Pot around every once in a while. So again, none of this is cooked through. It's all still raw, except for the sausage. The sausage wasn't raw. And then I'm going to saute my shrimp in there really quickly, just until they turn pink. Um, and then I'm gonna pull it out because I want some of that great andouille sausage flavor on there as well. There's so many great spices they use to make andouille sausage. Why not go for it? All right, so I'm just, just a little. Oh, that pretty prettiness coming up. So just until they turn a light, light pink is all I'm looking for. So just until they turn color. Like I said, I don't want them to cook because the last thing that you want is overcooked shrimp that tastes rubbery. about what else goes in there while we wait for that to saute. I'm gonna add garlic too. So in my mix, I'm gonna add half a tablespoon and a little bit more. It's really up to you how much garlic. I love garlic way too much. I think I used a full tablespoon. All right, I'm gonna pull this out, but I'm gonna keep this shrimp in a separate bowl. And the reason being, I'm not gonna add this back into the pan until I'm done cooking. And it's literally going to take one minute. All right, so I've got that going now. If you need to add a little bit more oil, go ahead and add a little bit more oil. Got a little piece of onion in here. Garlic's getting there. I'm gonna add my, my beautiful Trinity. There you go. And I'm just gonna saute this until the onions and veggies kind of soften up. No need to rush it but this is really what's gonna be the base of all your flavors. So there's gumbo, jambalaya, um, etouffees, um, red beans and rice. There's a whole category of foods that start exactly like this. Um, and you can use a red bell pepper if you want. I find a red bell pepper sometimes tends to be too sweet for most Cajun dishes. I like that kind of earthiness that you get from a green bell pepper. 
Um, and that it's almost bright too. Um, but it's a really unique flavor that I don't feel like any of the other peppers really have. Bell, green bell pepper is more neutral in flavor um, and just earthier. All right, so that's good. Good to go. Let that go for a little bit longer. Let's talk. We're going to use long grain rice, rinsed, and mine's dry already, but long grain rice if you can. If you just so happen to have jasmine rice lying around and that's all you have, you can use it. It will taste kind of like Thai food to a certain extent, but it's fine. Um, you just want a long grain because you don't want it to stick together. It should stick together just enough, but it should be able to fluff pretty well too. All right, so that's good to go. I'm going to add my rice inside. I'm gonna add my reserved meats and juices. So let all those extra juices kind of run down. I'm gonna add one bay leaf and a little bit of French thyme. And secret ingredient to almost all Cajun dishes, Worcestershire sauce of all things. So I'm gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. I'm gonna add a little bit of Cajun seasoning. So I use Tony's. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ones that you can use out there, um, but I like Tony Sachrin, I believe is the name of it. Um, the other one that you can use is Chef Prudhomme's, who was somebody that I greatly enjoyed working with in my earlier career. So we got diced tomatoes too. Ah, don't do that. And I'm gonna mix this around before I add everything else. just to make sure everything is nicely coated and mixed through. So the trick with rice in an instant pot, equal amounts of all things, except for brown rice. So I'm talking white rices only, okay? So if you're gonna use one cup of white rice, it's one cup of water. If you're gonna do um, one cup of jasmine, it's one cup and one cup. That makes perfect rice in my opinion. You might have a different texture that you're looking for in your rice, and so definitely play around with it. I'm gonna add my stock, and what I'm gonna try to do is use my chicken stock to get the extra rice that might be sticking on the side of the pan. And that's it. So that's gonna keep going just like that. Just wanna make sure that everything's underneath it as opposed to on top of it, because you don't want it to come up at you. All right, that's it. I'm gonna put the lid on, I'm gonna seal it, and then I'm gonna pressure cook on high for 12 minutes, okay? After 12 minutes, I'm gonna leave it on um, to kind of, I'm gonna leave it on so that it can depressurize on its own. And what you're looking for is that little, uh, little knob right here to go all the way down before you open it. And we should have perfect, uh, jambalaya at that point, at which time I'm gonna actually turn it on and then put my shrimp in and turn it back on for about a minute. So I will be right back, see you later. All right, everyone, so we've got our jambalaya. It is done. Let's open this guy up and see what it looks like. Oh, looks amazing. So we've got all of our great stuff in there, but I'm going to add the one thing that we reserved, which is our shrimp. So I'm gonna add our shrimp in there. Make sure it stays around just like that. And I'm gonna put the lid back on. And then I'm gonna pressure cook for no one minute. And that'll just be enough time for everything to kind of finish cooking. Um, if you wanna do it for longer, you can, but I find that the shrimp is ready to go. If you wanted to, what you could also do is cook your shrimp completely through and just serve it on the side. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, at the end, we're gonna garnish with a little bit of parsley. And that's it, that's how easy it is. And so if you wanted to do this on the stove, what I would do is cook everything, do everything exactly the same, keep the shrimp out. What you're gonna do is you're gonna increase the amount of liquid you add though. So you're gonna have to add about a half cup more chicken stock and then the other thing you're going to do is you're gonna cook for about 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. It depends on um, how much you're making. So a lot of people will say 20 minutes for rice. If you're making a large amount of rice though, it'll take a lot longer than that. It's really up to what it is that you're making um, to figure out. So let's check this guy out now. 
a little bit longer. Check too early, sorry. All right, I'll be right back. All right, I think this is done now. So I put it back in here, uh, the shrimp in there for about one minute and that's it. And then now I'm gonna release again, just a little amount of pressure that has built up from that one minute. Again, don't do this at home. Don't touch this, it's hot. Um, I'm wearing gloves too. All right, so there's perfectly cooked shrimp. Uh, not too well done. And then I'm going to take my parsley. I'm gonna sprinkle some parsley inside. We could also use um, scallions. Scallions are something that you'll see a lot too. Grab a large spoon and I'm going to just fluff. So just going in there just to mix it up, not overdoing it. And there you've got perfect jambalaya ready to go. One pot, freeze as well. Enjoy. See you later. Bye.